since the dawn of man we humans have become capable of a certain special gift. Well, they have your faith with me. How do you know? Because I know. Oh. Right. That's right. I forgot. You're a man. What was that supposed to mean? Nothing. It's just that all men are sure it never happened to them, and most women at one time or another have done it, so you do the math. You don't think that I could tell a difference? No. Get out of here. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Are you okay? Oh. We all know why men orgasm, but have you ever wondered why the female is given this wonderful gift? R. Robin Baker and Mark A. Bellis went in search of this answer. They discussed some interesting, yet basic, facts about a woman's big O. Female orgasms occur in four different ways. One, spontaneously during sleep, much like the wet dreams of men. Two, through self-stimulation, specifically via the clitoris. Three, through stimulation with a partner without copulation and four, through self, manual, or penile stimulation as a part of copulation. Oh, God. Ooh. Oh, God. Oh. 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 Oh, God. Oh, yeah, right there. Oh. 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 Oh, oh, God, oh, yes, 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 ah! First, there is the Polax hypothesis, which states that the orgasm functions to make her tired, forcing the woman to lie down, thus avoiding sperm loss through gravitational pull. And then the Upstock hypothesis, which states that the orgasm functions to suck up sperm during copulation. The two types of orgasms are considered to be uterine contractions and vaginal contractions. They referenced Dr. Singer in their research, who proposed that uterine orgasms enable conception whereas non-uterine orgasms do not. He further proposed that by a systemic shift from one type of orgasm to another, a female could, consciously or subconsciously, influence her probability of conception. So why would a woman still, um, fly solo? Non-copulatory orgasms are used as a substitute for copulatory orgasms or to train her body to orgasm during copulation. They focused on the amount of sperm retained in relation to the type and time of the woman's orgasm. 34 male-female human pairs were studied, with a total of 323 in-pair copulations. Seven pairs were not willing to collect flowbacks. Instead, they made subjective estimates of volume, normal, heavier than normal, lighter than normal, etc. The average number of sperm ejaculated for each couple was determined using whole counts from condom collections. They used a UK nationwide survey of female sexual behavior in which 3,679 females each answered 57 questions about her sexual behavior. On average, when males ejaculated more sperm, more were expelled in the flowback, but more were also retained in the cervix. First, the time it takes for flowback to occur should be longer if the woman has a copulatory orgasm. Second, more sperm should be retained if the female has a copulatory orgasm than if she does not. Third, more sperm should be retained the longer it takes for flowback to occur. But, on the whole, there is no support for the Polax theory in the data. There is no corresponding increase in the number of sperm retained, nor is there any positive association between time to flowback and a number of sperm retained. 
The orgasm should be associated with greater sperm retention only if sperm are already present in the female tract. Six categories of orgasm were recognized for their study. One, no orgasm. Two, orgasm during foreplay. Three, orgasm during copulation but before ejaculation. Four, during ejaculation. Five, after ejaculation while the penis is still in the vagina. And six, after copulation but before flowback. The timing of the female orgasm relative to copulation and male ejaculation has a highly significant influence on the number of sperm retained. The direction of the relationship is for the female to retain relatively more sperm when, the orgasm, when she orgasms later in the sequence than when she climaxes earlier. The relatively high incidence of non-copulatory orgasms, copulations without orgasm, and copulatory orgasms before the male ejaculates cannot be ignored. All these seemingly purposeless orgasms reduce sperm uptake at the next copulation because instead of sucking up seminal fluid, non-copulatory orgasms suck up vaginal secretions which lower the pH of the cervix, reducing sperm mobility and survival. Their influence can be overridden by a high uptake copulatory orgasm at the next copulation. The whole pattern hits strongly at a female strat strategy to influence sperm retention differently at different copulations. It follows that if a man succeeds in getting a woman to achieve orgasm anytime during or before copulation, he reduces her chances of her getting pregnant with the next man that comes along, unless the timing of her orgasm with the next man is such that more of his sperm are retained. In the absence of sperm competition, both male and female may benefit from improved chances of viable conception if fewer sperm are taken into the female reproductive tract. The advantage of fewer sperm may either be through reduced risk of debilitating the egg or through reduced risk of defective sperm. Females who produce the optimum rate of arrival of sperm through the cervical mucus will benefit both themselves and their male partner by increasing the chances of conception. The conception strategy for females in a monogamous situation seems primarily to favor low retention, early orgasm regimes because she doesn't want her egg to be bombarded with too many sperm. In situations with more than one partner, females tend to change their orgasm regimes to favor the second guy in the sperm competition. Females may manipulate the timing of orgasm with different males to suit her own priorities. Add to these changes in pattern of real orgasms the possibility of females faking or hiding orgasms, an opportunity for males to detect any underlying female strategy is greatly reduced. In summary, the female orgasm seems to have evolved as a means to influence conception. Oh! Oh, yes! 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 Oh! Yes! 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 Oh! 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 Oh, God! Oh! I'll have what she's having.